Chapter 5 by Sword and Lance. Hopefully you're all having a good day. Lancelot's joust has been interrupted by foul treachery. I care nothing for your rules or joust. I am here to, for revenge, and I mean to take your head. Lancelot, look out! A shadow warning as the knight lunges at Lancelot. Lancelot ducks and the heavy blade slices the air above him. You dishonor yourself. The knight swings his heavy sword again, but this time Lancelot lifts his sword and easily parries. Honor. What do you know of honor? You ride to and fro in your righteous quest and slaughter whomever you wish. Furious, Lancelot's attacker swings his sword again, snarling with rage when Lancelot blocks once more. I protect those who need protecting. You murdered my brother, Sir Turquine. Turquine and prison knights, commoners alike, and toyed with them for his own amusement. I did what was necessary. Lies! The knight draws a knife and flings it, nearly taking Lancelot in the throat. No! By the time he regains his footing, another knife is flying through the air. He barely manages to knock it aside with a sword. You'll have to try harder than that. Cheater! Fight with honor! Enough. Arthur leaps over the railing at the edge of the arena, uh, with Excalibur gleaming in his hand. Arthur, be careful. He smiles, clearly touched by your concern. Fear not, my lady. Together, Lancelot and I have defeated many worse foes. Your champion will not fail you. With that, Arthur charges into the fray just in time to block the knight's next blow. In the name of Camelot, you will stop this dishonorable assault at once or face justice. Lay down your sword. Not while my brother's killer still draws breath. And the members of the royal box murmur around you as Lancelot and Arthur try to flank their foe. I hope the king will be safe. Here, server girl, bring me more wine. You glance over and see Morgana waving a servant towards her, her eyes riveted to the fight as a wry smile plays against her mouth. Well, she's certainly enjoying Arthur's peril, but this is not, not enough to say whether she wishes him dead. On the battlefield, Arthur and Lancelot are pressing on the knight, determinedly fighting by side by side. Do not force us to humiliate you, man. Yield, I beg of you. But, for a moment, as one of the angry knights swings knock Excalibur side, the legendary blade nearly strikes Lancelot. The sight fills you with a sudden terrible sense of deja vu. Careful, Arthur. Merlin said attempting to change the future can bring visions about in new ways. <sighs> Did I just make things better, or by warning them, or make it closer to slaying one another? As fear strikes deep in your heart, the clash of swords snaps you back to the present. The fight has come uncomfortably close, and the disgraced knight turns to swing at the supports of the royal box. How dare you! No. Lancelot lunges, his sword catching the massive blade before it can touch the supports, but the effort overextends him and his weapon flies from his hand. Now you'll die, Lancelot. Arthur spins to defend Lancelot, but it's too late. The massive knight sword connects with Lancelot's side. Blood glistens on the challenger's sword, but Lancelot bites back a growl of pain and rolls away, staggering back to his feet directly in front of you. He stands strong, but unarmed. He needs a weapon. You frantically scan the royal box for something to help. There is a cluster of weapons by the box with a halberd thrusting out of it, or Morgana's goblet closer to hand. Watch. Goblet. Weapon. We'll do, we'll do how. Yeah, now you know what? I'm actually gonna grab the goblet. He snaps the goblet from Morgana's hand. Sorry. Excuse you? Ignoring her outrage, you throw the heavy cup directly at the disgraced knight's head. Who threw that? The knight spins in a fury, looking for the source of the attack. Morgana helpfully points at you, but in the chaos of the moment, Lancelot rolls under the knight's arm and comes to his feet with a sword in hand once again more. Will you not die? No, nor will I yield in the face of a tyranny. You will learn this as your brother did. In a move so fast the crowd gasped, Lancelot lunges, swinging his sword in a vicious arc. The knight barely manages to block, but with a skilled twist of his wrist, Lancelot disarms him, sending his weapons flying. Ugh! 
Before the man can move, Lancelot rests his blade gently against the knight's throat. Yield or die. The knight growls at Lancelot, anger radiating off of him like the shimmer of a summer's heat. Fine, kill me. Like you killed my brother. Slaughter me for your empty honor. No, because our honor is not empty. The knight raises his voice, or the king, to address the crowd. Though this man broke the rules of chivalry, a knight of the round table cannot. He has dishonored himself, but we will not follow his example. I do not want your pity. And yet, my pity is all you may have. Unlike you, I respect the rules of chivalry, and you are not worth my time. I miss the old ways. They were good. Guards, holding chains, rush forward, and Lancelot lifts his sword. The cheers from the crowd rise to a roar as the defeated knight is dragged away. Our most sincere thanks to Princess Guinevere, whose aim will certainly make everyone at the court think twice before misbehaving at feasts. Of course, he finds it amusing. You didn't throw his wine. Laughter drifts up from the crowd, accompanied by more cheers as you accept their applause with a wave. To the future queen! Your Highness! Mother raises a hand, and the crowd respectfully falls silent. If I may beg a moment's indulgence, we'll pause the joust to resolve this matter, but the festivities these will resume soon. As the crowd, as soon as he drops his hand, the crowd erupts again. Arthur accepts her cheers before removing his helm and returning to the royal box, where Morgana rolls her eyes. Congratulations, I suppose. You managed not to die. Ah, your compliments are as effusive as ever, sister. I might sound more complimentary if someone hadn't tossed my drink in the midst of a duel. Arthur turns away from his sister's jibes to look at you with concern. I doubt... I, I doubt she would have been, you know, nice either way. Are you well after the interruption, Guinevere? Me. I am better now that you've returned in one piece. He gently plays a hand on his arm, and Arthur smiles more brightly for you than he did for the cheering crowd. But how are you? Glad that my friend is now safe, and glad not to have caused you any heartache by foolishly losing my head. Though I worry for Lancelot, he may claim he's fine, but I hope this wound will not hamper him to the bouts to come. Well, the guard signals for Arthur, and as he turns to answer a question, you catch sight of Lancelot headed for a private tent. Well, this is one worry I can take from Arthur. You slip from the royal box and interrupt, or intercept Lancelot before he can enter the tent. Sir Lancelot, my lady. He does his best to bow, but he cannot hide a slight wince as he clutches the wound in his side. Can I be of some assistance? Not precisely. I came here because I'm worried about you. It is kind of you to worry about me, Princess, but he barely nicked me. He hit you in the side, with a sword. But not very hard, I'll be fine. Sir Lancelot. I promise, your Highness. I have bandaged plenty of my own wounds on the road. I intend to do so now, and then rejoin the joust. Must you bandage them on your own? I would not wish to trouble another with the task. So, he'll not ask for help, but that does not mean he would not welcome him. And in spite of his words, you can tell that Lancelot is in more pain than he wants to admit. He looks from you to a nearby tent, clearly eager to go, and just as clearly unwilling to say farewell. Insist on him doing his wounds. You should not have to tan this wound alone. Let me help. You, your highness. I know something of how to care for an injury. He hesitates, clearly torn, and you can tell he's about to protest. Princess... Please, consider this an order from your future queen. You have told me time and time again that you are my sworn knight, duty-bound to serve me, and now I make a simple request and you deny? Your Highness, I would never. I only wish not to trouble you. Mm, I'll decide what troubles me, and right now it is the fact that you're bleeding. Now, if you'll let me rectify the situation? He gives you a short bow, marred by a wince of pain. As your highness wishes. 
You follow him into the small tent, which holds a simple cot and a table laden with wine and medical supplies. He keeps a stoic expression, but his muscles tense as you help him out of his armor and reveal the wound on the side. You said it was a simple scratch. No, 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 he said it was a nick. Not even a scratch. Very stoic. It is, your highness. If this is what you consider a scratch, I should hate to see what you call a significant wound. That's where you cut their head off. I'm serious. I can walk this off. As you reach for the claw to begin cleansing the wound, you see thin scars uh, crisscrossing his body. Proof that the knight has seen true battle and survived it more than once. You try to keep your touch gentle as you clean the wound, but Lancelot sucks in a sharp breath, his muscles going rigid beneath your fingertips. I'm sorry, does it hurt? He immediately relaxes, his expression softening. No, princess, you simply startled me. It is the heat in his eyes that tells you the truth. Your touch does not hurt, quite the opposite. I see. You feel him brace as you continue, being as tender as possible as you wash away the blood while your knuckles graze the tight muscles of his abdomen. He takes another deep breath. Almost finished. Thank you, your highness. You still won't call me Gunnar Definitely not. As you rinse the cloth you're using to clean the wound, you find that your gauze pulled once again to the scars, particularly one that the bisects his upper arm. They're not so terrible, you know, my scars. He lifts his fingers to touch the thin, faded one that caught your eye. I got this one from Turquoise. The knight's brother? Hmm. Turquoise was as big as his brother. And just as mean. It was a vicious battle, and I will always carry a scar from it. But the scar helps to remind me. Of the fight? Of the people I was there to save. People who deserve the right to live their lives in peace. Not some twisted overlord taking pleasure in their suffering. Every scar I carry tells the story of a good people saved and villains punished. That is the life I choose as a knight of the round table. It must be... Exciting. Is it as glorious as the stories make it sound? It can be. I will not lie and say my quests are entirely noble. I enjoy the thrill of testing my skills against another. But Turquoise's brother wasn't the first to come seeking vengeance, and he won't be the last. Then it must be a hard life. Always worried about danger coming for you. On the contrary, it's easier than when they come to me instead of making me chase them down. I suppose that would be convenient. Yes, my only fear is... His eyes lock with yours, curiously intent. I fear that sometimes my life puts others around me in danger. That it is safer not to let anyone too close. His words linger for a moment before Lancelot clears his throat. I even worry about the king sometimes. Though Arthur is certainly capable of defending himself. That sounds lonely. I have never known any other life. Besides, I have Arthur and all the knights of the round table. I have almost never regretted my choices. Almost? I regret that I have worried you today. I swore to keep you safe, which means I should be the one worrying about you. You underestimate me, Sir Lancelot. I'm quite capable of taking care of myself. And of you, when the situation calls for it. True enough, your swift intervention to turn the tide of our duel to victory. I don't think Morgana will soon forgive me for stealing her wine. Hm, likely not, but I intend to begin weapon training with a goblet immediately. Your fierce example has inspired me. I am glad. You finish cleaning the wound and reach for the bandages. He holds still as you carefully wrap the rat last of around his midsection. For just a brief moment... You are so close, and entirely alone. You tie the bandage firmly, and smooth it down with your fingers. There we are. Thank you, princess. It was the very least I could do for my sworn knight. He rises, and bows formally. It was more than I should have allowed, and yet I have no regrets. You have a gentle touch, your highness. 
I feel ready to face a dozen knights. I look forward to it. Do you need help with your armor? No, your highness, I am quite able. The joust will resume soon, and you should not miss it. You make your way back to the royal box as trumpets sound announcing the resumption of the joust. Now riding, Sir Gawain! This is Sir Percival! Oh, please tell me it's him. But despite the feats of martial prowess in the arena, the nobles around you are more concerned with Lancelot and Arthur's earlier fight. King Arthur has more tolerance than I do. I should have lopped that interloper's head from his shoulders. Really? I thought the king was wise to show such mercy. Or great squeamishness, as usual. Well, I am glad the king is here. We may have not had such a upset of Jow since King Uther's reign. And it's precisely the vile behavior I would have expected from Sir Turquine's brother. Morgana may be closed mouthed, but the other guests seem to know a great deal of gossip. If I can get Morgana away from them, perhaps they can share some of their secrets. The nobles mutter to themselves as the next match begins, and you look for a moment where Morgana's attention is elsewhere. Ready to taste a fee, Sir Kay? Not today, Sir Yvine. The nobles continue their gossip. You watch Sir Yvine unseat a grumpy looking Kay, who grumbles as he acknowledges her victory with a short bow. You'd best get used to the taste, Kay. Either that or learn to steady your lance. Lancelot rides next, and although his form is perfect, you can swear he shifts his lance at the last second to avoid striking Sir Bedivere's shield. Well done, Sir Bedivere. I shall watch my flank more carefully next time. Did you go easy on him, just so you don't have to fight Arthur? I don't know what you're talking about, Gwine. Ah, sometimes he's so noble it makes my teeth hurt. Well, Lancelot was feeling well enough to ride, but for now, Morgana seems distracted. Sir Agravine rides against Sir Bors. This will be over before you know what hit you. You glance about for something to keep their her occupied. This is a servant approaches your side of the box with a tray of goblets, a pitcher of wine. Spill some on her. Yeah, we're doing it. You take a goblet and fill it to the brim with wine before hand holding it to, to Morgana. For you, Lady Morgana. As she reaches for it, you feign a stumble and smash the wine on her dress. Oh no! You clumsy fool. She rises to her feet and angrily wipes at her skirt before shout shooting you a poisonous glare. Is there anyone you won't throw wine on? Good people. I'm so sorry. I stumbled. Just get out of my sight before you ruin the, my view of the match. But leave the pitcher. You set the pitcher of wine next to her and slip away, taking a seat closer to the group of gossiping nobles. Sir Agravine is relentless. I should not wish to face him if I do not have to. And he has no particular love of the King or Lancelot, to be sure. Oh, why ever not? The nobles exchange looks as if unsure they want to be caught gossiping in front of their future queen, but Lady Anna huffs. I suspect it's his connection to Lady Morgana. Hmm, they do seem close. They are, but not like you're thinking, Your Highness. Sir Agravine is Lady Morgana's cousin. Oh, I had no idea they were related. Indeed. Which is not to say she has not had a share of dalliances. Well, haven't we all? I remember the first time I walked in the moonlight with Yvain. Are you and Sir Yvain together now? But there's something dreadfully romantic about a beautiful knight pledging her fealty to you, is there not? Of course, but the issue is not that Morgana enjoys moonlight strolls with beautiful people. Is the issue those people's affiliations? Precisely. Lady Morgana's noble and royal paramours have shown a tendency to dislike King Arthur, sometimes rebelliously. Truly? King Caradoc nods in agreement with her, and he opens his mouth as if to say more, but then seems to think better of it, glancing towards Morgana on the other side of the box. This is a dangerous topic, Your Highness. Perhaps we should enjoy the joust. 
But King Caradoc surely as mighty as a warrior, you does not fear gossip. You lean closer and lower your voice. What threat could mere rumors for hold for a man who has won so many battles? One of the other nobles giggles softly behind her hand, but Caradoc takes the compliment at face value, stroking his beard thoughtfully. Well, seeing as your highness is new in court, my guidance would be never to turn your back on Lady Morgana or her close friends. Hmm, that might be a bit harsh. Harsh, perhaps, but true. It is certainly didn't end well for Sir Bren, did it? Who is Sir Bren? Lady Brucen's husband. They were both quite close to Lady Morgana, I always thought. Brucen more so than her husband, but they were often seen together on the court. Morgana certainly didn't mention that to me. You glance at Morgana, who's peering at you with growing suspicion in her eyes. It looks like she's about to stand when a trumpet sounds from the lists. Riding for the championship, we have King Arthur and Sir Agravain. Arthur rides forward to face Sir Agravain, who sports Morgana's favor. To victory, Sir Agravain. Show my soft-hearted brother what real valor is. To victory, my king. I hope to do you proud. He salutes you before Sir Agravain lowers his lance and charges. Your heart leaps in your throat as your champion thunders across the arena to meet him, and your lances strike shield with a resounding clash. Sir Agravine flies through the air to land with a solid thump on the ground and the crowd explodes into cheers. I present your winner of today's joust, King Arthur. Three cheers for the king! Arthur accepts a single rose that denotes victory and rides to the royal box. He holds the rose out to you. For my future queen, as a token of my devotion. Hmm... I reach out to accept the rose and then lean precariously over the edge of the box to kiss Arthur's cheek. His cheek is warm beneath your lips. You inhale sharply as you pull back and smile and cheers from the crowd. Thank you, my champion. His gaze is warm as he brushes his fingers to the token you tied around his arm. How could I not ride to victory when I carried your strength with me? I believe you were frequently victorious long out before I arrived. By chance or by luck, perhaps, but no. He takes your hand and that bows over it. No, I'll be victorious for you. Arthur rides back to the center of the lists, raises an arm, silencing the crowd once again. My congratulations to all the knights who competed valiantly today. You've demonstrated not just skill, but the honor of Camelot. I would accuse you of letting your king win if so many of you had knocked me off my horse quite willingly in previous tournaments. The crowd laughs and Arthur smiles and quiets him with another wave. But I accept my victory and I'll take it as a good omen for the wedding to come. Please join me in celebrating your future queen trumpets sound, and all the knights line up before the royal box to draw their swords in unison as the crowd cheers. To the princess. To the future queen. To my future queen. Lancelot hesitates for only the briefest sliver of a moment before following Arthur's toast. To Princess Guinevere. Hmm. After the joust, Lancelot and Arthur escort you back into the castle, and you share what you learned about Morgana. Did you know that she's been close to kings and nobles who rebelled against you? I cannot say I'm surprised there's gossip. Morgana may not flaunt her lovers, but she's never been uh, circumspect. Uh, ordinarily, I would not care who uh, has dalliances with whom, but if her partners always go to rebel against you, Arthur. Surely it cannot be always. The nobles seem convinced there is a pattern, at least, and they seemed wary of discussing it. Arthur, you cannot simply ignore this. I'm not ignoring it. I'm simply refused to condemn her based on rumors about her personal affairs. We both know court gossip can be vicious. And sometimes it is nothing but deadly truth wrapped in a deception of idle gossip. 
Arthur looks to you, his gaze troubled. Guinevere, you spoke with Morgana yourself. What do you think? I think there's too much we still do not know. I agree that there is a reason for concern, but to implicate her at the in an attempt poisoning is a serious accusation. The stakes of being wrong are too high. If you'll forgive me, your highness, so are the stakes of being right. It troubles me to, to even consider the Morgana might plot against me. Not just you, Arthur. Let's all look significantly in your direction, and Arthur stiffens. Yes, you're right. There's more at stake than my life now. Me? You're the future queen. Any plot against the throne or Camelot endangers you as well. But you must not worry, your highness. We will protect you with all of our might. I wish I to protect the two of you. This is about more than just poisoning. If someone needs to drive you and all of Camelot to ruin, there has to be some way to find more answers. Perhaps tomorrow might bring an, us an opportunity. It is the anniversary of the founding of the Round Table. There is always a festival in honor every year. I expect Morgana and Sir Bryn will both be in attendance. The Poisoner's Widow, or perhaps he can tell us why his late wife tried to harm you. Indeed. It should be an excellent chance to question them both at length about their intentions towards Camelot and Brucen's fate. You'll also have duties to perform at the event alongside Arthur as its royal hosts. I consider it a chance to get no more of the Camelot's people. Commoners, nobles alike, attend the festival, and you can meet some of the artisans who will contribute food and goods to our wedding. It is suddenly awkward, discussing your impending nuptials in front of Lancelot, but his only reaction is a slight tightening of his jaw. If you'll have no more need of me tonight, I'll take my leave. I must ensure the knights and guards are on high alert for the festival. Of course. We must be certain the guests are protected. Not to mention the two of you. He bows and vanishes down the corridor. You watch him go, your chest aching as Arthur turns to you with a gentle smile curving his lips. Well, I suppose this is a good night. It doesn't have to be. I'm sure you must be tired after the excitement of today, but if you're interested, I have a private bathing chamber where baths are fed by warm underground springs. You're welcome to join me. That's quite a generous invitation, King Arthur. Uh, there are bathing screens, of, of course, for the sake of privacy, uh, but I consider it a highlight of uh, life here in the city. It would be a wonderful way to unwind after the stress of the joust. He hesitates for a moment before passing onward, and I would be delighted to share with you. Join Arthur for a bath. That sounds divine. I'd be happy to join you. Shall we? He offers you his arm and leads you deeper into the castle through a private royal wing to a stone chamber. I could so go for one of that. Oh, nice hot bath. Just big old thing, you know. Get lost in it. It's beautiful. Gentle steam breathes the air, rising from the warm waters that fill the large stone pool. It lends a certain intimacy to the space, as if you're all alone in the world. I'm pleased you like it. True, Arthur's words. Servants have set up screens to divide the pool in two. He notices you looking at them and clears his throat. Uh, we may be betrothed, but uh, we have not known each other very long. I wanted you to enjoy this chamber without feeling, um, obligated? Yes, or uncomfortable. For a long moment, you gaze at one another, then retreat to your respective sides of the pool. You undress, but it's hard not to be aware of Arthur's shadow moving on the other side of the screen. Are you ready to experience one of the wonders of Camelot? I wouldn't be here otherwise. You sink into your side of the pool, of, up to your chin. The temperature is perfect, and the spring-fed water moves in soft, relaxing currents that coax the knots from your tense muscles. This is delightful. I could never have dreamed of such a luxury back home. You're very fortunate. I am, without a doubt. I often come here when stress threatens to overwhelm me, or when I've uh, had a physical taxing day. You could almost hear his winds. Uh, fighting that villainous knight offered a bit more adventure than I expected from the joust. You 
didn't have to get involved. But you were brave to help Lancelot. What else could I have done? Nothing, I suppose. Not every king would risk his life for a knight. But I had to. He is my closest friend. And the fact that you stood up for him means a great deal to me. I only have one question. Why did you try to get the knight to surrender instead of striking him down? Because I'm the king. Kings cannot afford to act out of personal feeling. Even though your friend's life was in danger. I'll admit, I was furious. I wanted to strike that man down for threatening Lancelot. But I founded the round table upon the principles of justice, mercy, and as a king, it is my duty to set an example of them. His voice takes on a conoblate of note, one tinged by determination. A ruler must always do what is right, not what is easy. I think... Your dedication is admirable. If one had no guiding principles, save for what they won, they are not a ruler, they are a tyrant. Through the thin screen, you see Arthur's silhouette nod. I'm glad you understand, especially since we will soon rule side by side. You could have easily called on the Knights of the Round Table to intervene, though. Instead, you rushed into the fray yourself. Why? The simple Lancelot would have done so for me in a heartbeat. I owed him the same, no less. So... You still trust Ram Lancelot after everything I've told you? What I saw both of you doing to each other? He considered your question for a long time before answering solemnly. I believe your vision. Never doubt that. But until it comes to pass, I will treat my friend as my friend. If we are doomed anyway, I wish to enjoy his friendship while I can. Arthur's silhouette shifts on the screen as he slides deeper into the water. I remain sorry that things have been so unsettled since your arrival. It's not your fault. Peace is a fragile thing, always on the verge of breaking, no matter how many times you restore it. I know the feeling well. Still, you've handled the excitement with incredible poise, grace, uh, truly worthy of a queen. He seems to appreciate grace and poise, but how would he feel about boldness? I will... Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this at my own pace. That is a generous compliment. I will do my best to live up to it. It is no less than you deserve. In that case, you should keep going. Very well. In our short acquaintance, I've learned that you're kind, noble, good company. I was joking. Do you wish me to retract those compliments, then? Mm, no. I shall find a way to live with them. This a soft laugh echoes off the stone, filling the chamber with warmth. I appreciate you sharing this place with me. I appreciate you joining me. I have to admit, I'll never, uh, I've never invited anyone before. Then I'm honored to be the first. You both climb out of the, your sides of the pool. As you dry off, you mostly keep your eyes lower, but you can't resist a glimpse at the screen. You can see Arthur's shadow cast against it, his movement slow and purposeful as he dries the water from his skin and dresses. It is getting late. I suppose I should rest. Then good night, and I hope you rest well. Despite the words, neither of you moves to leave just yet. The gentle stream filling this place lingers between you. There's no obligation in what comes next, no thought of uncertain futures you have seen, just you and this man whose warm smile, uh, you more than the sun itself. You close the distance between you, tilt your head up, and press your lips to his. Guinevere. He murmurs your name in soft surprise, and before any doubt has a moment to enter your mind, he kisses you back eagerly, his hand slipping down to grip your hips. His fingers tighten, but just for a moment, breaks the kiss, only to rest his forehead against yours. Oh, that was unexpected. We are betrothed, are we not? We are, but I would ask nothing of you that you do not freely wish to get. He gently plays a finger against his lips and he hushes. I wished for this so long, it, is, uh, it was not unwelcome. He immediately shakes his head, taking your hands in his. I have thought of it since the very moment we met. 
You are a remarkable woman, Guinevere. Even as he finally steps back, the heat of the kiss, your first kiss with him, leaves you short of breath. And I hope we'll have much more time to get to know each other in the days to come. As do I. The next morning, a knock wakes you from restful sleep. You hurry to the door and find Arthur and Lancelot looking grim. Has something happened? It's Morgana. We were hoping to question her at the festival today. But she's vanished from court. Hmm. What a surprise. Without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to do what's on the screen. To like the video, share the video, share the community. It's very, very much appreciated. Um, without further ado, I want to thank each and every one of you um, for watching the video the other day, um, for tuning in, and especially those who have um, shared it, especially those of you who have shared it. Um, those of you who um, continue to share it, it means more than anything in the world, um, as, again, we have a, a minimum goal to meet, right? Um, that is to help me. Um, so again, it is very much appreciated. And for those of you who um, gave out of your own pocket, I always feel like for those that give to this channel through that method, my thank you um, will never be enough. Um, I, I, ever since the, the first time uh, I ever got anything from one of you, um, brought me to tears, actually, and continues to do so, as it, it means the world t to me. Um, it really, truly does. And those of you who uh, suffer through my uh, reading of some of these books, <laughs> um, I kid, in case you couldn't tell. Um, thank you. You know, each and one of you that continues to watch my content and videos and things like that, it, it means a lot to me. So truly, it, it it really does, and it means it means the world. You know, you you make this you make this world seem like a a little bit better of a place, and uh, you continue to humble me. So thank you, thank you all for tuning in, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.